Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, unschooling mom and author, bringing you interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free Exploring Unschooling ebook, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Larickia and this is episode number 32 of the podcast. It's the 10th of August, 2016, as I record this intro. In this episode, I chat with Alex Polakowski about when an unschooling child chooses to go to school. We talked about why her daughter wanted to go to school, how Alex continued to fully support Gigi's school choice, what Gigi liked and didn't like about school, why she chose to come back to unschooling, and tons of stuff in between. It was a fascinating conversation and a great glimpse into the possibilities when a child expresses an interest in school. For an update, a few weeks ago, I asked for anyone interested in transcribing podcast episodes to get in touch, and you guys did not disappoint. We've created what so far seems to be an awesome team of people, and that means we've got the depth to cover each other when transcription needs bump up against our unschooling lives. And now I just need to get ahead with my recordings so that they've got more than a couple of days to work with. So if you go to livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast, you will see a link to the transcript beside episode number 32. Yay! (laughs) The team will also be working on the backlist episodes, so eventually the information and inspiration from all our guests will be available to read as well as listen to. I am so excited to be working with them, and a big thank you to everyone on the team. Thanks! Uh, The quote this week comes from Seymour Papert. Papert passed away a few weeks ago at the age of 88. He's the author of a number of books, including The Connected Family, Bridging the Digital Generation Gap, and Mindstorms, Children, Computers, and Powerful Ideas. Lego Mindstorms is actually named after his book. He was a professor at MIT for much of his career and worked on learning theories, especially the impact of new technology on learning in general, which grew out of his time as one of Jean Piaget's protégés. So, Papert said, I am convinced that the best learning takes place when the learner takes charge. I think this ties in so nicely with the school choice topic this week. When the learner is in charge and making choices, that's where the best learning is because that's where the child's or the adult's thoughts and questions are. That's where connections are primed and waiting to be made. The key, though, is to remember that a choice made in pursuit of learning isn't a forever choice. For learning to thrive, they need to be able to incorporate their experiences into their next choice and into the next one. They need to take charge. And now, let's listen to the interview and hear how Alex supported Gigi's choices in her pursuit of her own learning. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Alex Polakowski. Hi Alex. Hi Pam. (laughs) I've known Alex online for years and was lucky enough to meet her in person when I spoke at an Always Learning Live unschooling conference that she hosted in Minneapolis. I had a great time hanging out with her, meeting her husband and her kids and getting a brief glimpse of life on a dairy farm. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you, Alex, so let's get started. Our first question is, can you share with us just a bit about you and your family and how you came to unschooling? Hi, Pam. It was great having you here, too. And uh, was it two years ago already? Yeah, it feels Um, uh, Brian and I are older parents. I had my first son at 36, and our daughter was born when I was 40, almost 40, two days before. So we really wanted to have a family, and I knew that if I had kids, I would be very dedicated and involved and and be with them, and Brian was the same way. He just wanted to be with our kids. I'm from Brazil, and Brian is a Minnesota boy, and we're dairy farmers full-time, so we live in a farm, and there's no Sunday, Saturday, Sunday weekend or time off, really. We, We just... 
work every day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So we came to a school and we, we had our first baby, uh, my son, Daniel. He was very high needs and I, I was very protective and, and he stayed in my lap all the time and I loved it and I couldn't put him down and he wouldn't let me put him down. And I started by going to the mall and wanting to get a baby book. I had no baby books. And so I was looking for a book and there was this big baby book. And I picked that one up because my baby was starting to get fussy and it was Dr. Sears book. And he talked about attachment parenting, which is pretty much what I was doing. I didn't know about using a sling, which really helped when I learned to do it since I couldn't put my baby down. And from there, a few months later, I Googled, probably wasn't even Google back then. I, I searched <laughs> the internet for natural parenting and came, I came upon Jan Hunt's website, the natural child. And that's how I first heard about unschooling. And I started reading. I had no idea. Even though I was reading there, I had no idea what it meant. Um, but I loved a lot of the things she wrote and other authors wrote. And when my son was about two years old, I came up, came to the Yahoo groups. That was um, always learning, unschooling basics, always unschooled. And I joined those groups. And that's when I really started learning more about unschooling. So I was lucky to start early on and to start reading about it and practicing and uh, unschooling when my son was a baby and then two years old. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> I would appreciate that. <laughs> um, so now to hit the topic of this week's episode, let's jump ahead and um, and tell us a bit about your daughter, Gigi, and uh, her choice to go to school last year. I was wondering if you could share with us how that choice came about for her and what the motivation behind it was. Gigi had mentioned that she always uh, that she would one day want to try school and see how it was. So a year before she went to school last year, she went as soon as school started. So the year before she was thinking about it and then she decided no no let's uh, I'll try another time and last year she it, it came August she said I really want to try school and it was she was nine years old and she would have been she was fourth grade and I thought it's a good good time for her to try since she's not in middle school and and you know she's still being in elementary and we really have good schools here our my, the, my school district has a really, really nice school um, that is supposed to be one of the best in the state and supposed to be very peaceful and safe. And then I said, OK, that's what you want to do. And she's, I want to go. I want to learn. She had this idea of school being a place you go and you learn, 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 because she's a very smart girl. She knows a lot. And she's she was reading fluently and she's great in math. Um in a way that the, the reasons I know she's great in math is because she has a horseback riding instructor that is also a teacher and she teaches math since, and she's had this instructor since she was five years old. And while talking and having horseback riding lessons, this teacher is always, Oh my God, Gigi, she's so smart. She knows math. She knows the concept. You know, my sixth grade students don't get it. And she knows it. So that's the reason not because I was testing her or, quizzing her or mm -hmm. trying to figure out. So I know she was learning a lot. She's amazingly in the farm. She knows all the cows, all the names, all the breeding. She knows things that uh, many dairy farmers don't know. But she had this impression that school would give her all this learning. Like when somebody would say a name of a country and she didn't know, she was under the impression that if she joined school, she would know it all. She would mm -hmm. have this full knowledge of everything in the world because yes. she's thirst, her thirst for knowledge is big. She's very curious. Yeah. And, uh, and I think another thing that did attract her was social interactions. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of friends online. She had some good local friends and she does go to 4 age and she does Girl Scout and she has friends there. But she, she and her best friend of many years kind of had a fallout. And they haven't been friends since. And I think she was missing maybe trying to find a friend like that, a best friend. So I signed her up and 
came, she, the day came for her to go for her first um, test. They, they kind of have a meeting before. And she tested super high on classes. And she went to a teacher that was more into math because she was so doing so well in math. And she was so excited. We bought everything for her, all the school material. And she was thrilled. She went to school uh, the first day, so excited, didn't even look back. <laughs> it was, it was. So I think that it was two things. The impression that it, the kids get sold that, you know, learning happens in school, that she was going to learn everything about everything in the world. There was not going to be anything she did not know. And... Mm -hmm. The school life of having friends and chatting and, you know, that she was probably missing even though she had a good social yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. No, that, those sounds sound like uh, great reasons for her, right? This is this was what she was hoping. This is what she's looking for, right? Yes. And, and that seemed like a place that she might be able to get it. So, yeah, I can totally understand that. Um, I was just just wondering um, if you doesn't sound like it, but if you had any issues registering her mm. and if was there anything she wanted to do to prepare beforehand or did you just kind of show up the first day? No, there were no issues registering the, uh, there. There have been any, I wouldn't say it, we're not in a big town and we're close to a, a, a bigger town, but it's, it's not a big area. I, we've never had any issues with the school district. Um, didn't have any issues registering. It was a piece of cake. They, the, in Minnesota, we do register with our school district as homeschoolers. So they had mm -hmm. knowledge of her. Um, I just filled out the paperwork, sent it in. They were absolutely delightful to work all the way to the end. Even when we quit, when she quit mm -hmm. going to the school, they were delightful. Uh, the teacher was really nice. Uh, so I didn't, I, I didn't do anything to prepare her. I just told her a few things like she's very huggy and jumping on people and hugging and very affectionate. I said, Gigi, you know, in school, you can't really just go and hug people as much, um, <laughs> which I saw her do there and they were all thrilled about it. So I was like, maybe <laughs> I was wrong. So that's pretty much the only thing I've said. A few tips, you know, you know, you remember, you know, this when it's time to eat, you should eat because they, you won't be able to eat later. You know, there, there are times to eat in school, things, things like that. But they were they were very welcoming and I, she didn't have any problems. And I really didn't prepare her for anything. She was so thrilled to go, you know, they can do it when mm -hmm. they want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so you mentioned that she was thrilled on her first day when she uh, went. So, yeah, I was just wondering a bit more about her classroom experience that first week, the things that she really did enjoy. And was there anything that she uh, wasn't enjoying in that first week? No, right away she enjoyed everything. She was thrilled. She loved it. She, she loved the teachers and she loved the classes and she told me everything she was doing and the, and the people she was meeting and little by little things came up. Mm -hmm. And one the first things that came up was that she wasn't learning as much as she thought she would be learning. So her, one of the first complaints was that was there was a lot of waste of time. And she complained about kids chatting and not paying attention uh, mm -hmm. and distracting in the class. Not that she wanted the kids because she's very she distracts people herself, but she wanted to learn. She wanted to be there. She was there on a mission. And, yeah. and she sat there, I think, thinking that she was going to just soak in all this knowledge, like really all the hours she was there. And it's not quite like that. Oh, well, that's fascinating. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of um, kind of downtime transition time, Yes, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question I wanted to ask was how you guys chose to handle um, any of the school's expectations around homework and tests and grades and stuff like that. I had no expectations in grades at all. Um, mm -hmm. I never s said anything about grades. She wanted to do well. She wanted to do the homework. Uh, the parents are supposed to help the kids in homework, so I helped her. 
um, I really didn't have to push her. She would sit and do the homework. I would remind her, you know, because I knew she didn't want to, she wanted to do it. So mm-hmm. I said, okay, let's, let's finish it up. So I would help her out. I, and sometimes she's like, come on, Gigi, let's get it done. But it was never, there was never a time that I had to, you know, put down the law or do anything because she wanted, she wanted to get good grades. She wanted to do well. She wanted to have the homework done. It was her choice to be in school. Yeah. It was her choice to, to do all that. And she knew because we had talked about, you know, you're going to have homework and you're going to have to do it. I mean, if, if you don't do it, I would always say, if you don't do it, you're not, you, you know, you don't have to, but then, you know, you're not, you're, you're being graded on those homeworks. So if you want to, like you said, to get good grades, but it wasn't, it was never an issue. Um, she, uh, actually one time there was a parent teacher conference, the first one, and we went and actually the kid it presents the conference. It was really nice and said what the things she needs to work on. And it wasn't anything. And right after the conference, both her math teacher and the other teacher that does half the classes it was more of the language teacher. They came over and they went on and on and on to me about how wonderful Gigi was, how motivated, how her way of thinking was so different than the other kids in the class, how she would come up with answers and think in ways that the other kids did not. And did I know what her nickname in class was? And I'm like, no, her nickname is Genius Gigi. <laughs> because she would pick um, some, I guess there was something that the math teacher was going on about and or putting a problem and she made a mistake and Gigi caught it and said, mm-hmm. no, no, this is how it. So she was nicknamed Genius Gigi because she did so well in math mm-hmm. and so well in everything. And they were just, just like how motivated she was and how she was excited about everything and how nice she was. You know, the, I know the principal gave her a star for opening the door for kids. You know, I think it's totally different when you want to be there. And you know, this kid wants to be there and I, and I'm, and I'm listening to them go on and raving about her. And I'm thinking, yeah, because she wants to be here. <laughs> if for me she would be at home but i'm like oh great yes no she's really nice yeah so it was yeah, really I cute think, yeah that's such i mean it's just an entirely different experience when you're choosing to be there isn't it yes the, she started complaining about little things uh you know i think one of the biggest hurdles for her was eating Mm-hmm. Because she she absolutely hated the cafeteria food. She said it looked disgusting. Even French fries or anything like that. She said, oh, they look disgusting. I don't think she liked to eat around the other kids because some kids eat, ate funny. Then I would send food with her, but she would eat a tiny bit of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I've even taken food like at lunchtime, like Subway and that helped, but you know, every day <laughs> it's a little bit too much. Yeah, I send, I got a, a termite and I send hot food, and then you know, it's just because she's so used to being at home and eating, you know, and she eats a lot, she eats all the time. That that kid eats, she's always been like that. She's like a little bird every hour mm-hmm. or two, she's like, I'm hungry, and you have to feed her. So, being in school and having lunch, and they do have a little snack. Uh, at like 10 o'clock in the morning. It was just too hard for her. The other mm-hmm. thing is they don't have diet, diet, diet Coke. So I had to send Diet Coke with her for lunch, but they don't have it there. And she's used to drinking it and she gets a headache if she doesn't. Because she's, mm-hmm. since she was little, she drinks, her dad drinks it and she would zip out of her dad's can. So, mm-hmm. you know, having caffeine withdrawals was not so good for her. So I always had to give her caffeine as for breakfast and, and send a can of diet Coke. I said, they, they're not going to look very good. at you looking, drinking diet Coke there, you know, elementary school, they're kind of, but that was, I think the hardest part it was, was that she did awesome in a, in, a, um, athletics too. Uh, she did join the, which she stayed even after she quit school, she stayed with the basketball traveling team and they were third uh in state so ah. she kept her friends and her basketball friends 
So she went to school in August, um, September when it's school started. So she was there right away, first day of class. And she, in December, she got sick. She got pretty sick. And that was one of the things too. She did get sick more often being in school than she did not, than she, when she's not going to school, even going to all kinds of social events and it's just, I guess, the way school is in close quarters. Or mm-hmm. maybe it was just a bad year for her. And after she got really sick, when she felt good again, um, she said, I'm done. I don't want to go back. But it, but it was so odd, so sudden that she said to me, and I told Brian, uh, honey, she said she's done. And she was so excited and telling everybody that she was going to go to high school. She was going to stay in school. And she loved school. And then suddenly she's like, I don't want to, I'm done. I'm, are you sure? Yep, I'm sure. And she never looked back. I thought she was going to regret and miss her friends, but she never did. She was done. She had the experience she wanted. She aced it. She did well. So she knows she can do well in school. She knows what school is all about. I don't think there'll ever be a point that she will look back on her schooling career or her childhood and say oh maybe if I had gone to school you know like maybe some kids would have maybe school was the right way or you know why was I Mm -hmm. raised differently because she did have the option she did chose to go to school she aced it she did well and then she's like okay I'm done with this experience I'm ready to be back yeah (laughs) and I mean she also knows she could always choose it again but yeah like you said that she now has that experience that you said, as you mentioned, she had been thinking about it even before she chose to do it. Right. So it was something she was curious about. So this was satisfying her curiosity. eh? It totally satisfied her curiosity. And, and she knows that, that it, 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 like you said, she knows she can choose to go back if she wants to. So I don't see it right now. She's completely happy being at home and doing her own things. Um, I asked her why she was quitting school. She said, I don't don't have time to go, you know, work with my cows and play online with her friends. I just don't have time. You know, it's just because, you know, face it, you go to school in the morning. She would be back at home a little after three. And then that was all the time she had. But then she had to go to bed earlier. She didn't really go to bed early, but earlier because she was tired. And she had Girl Scout and 4 age. She was and horseback riding and piano. She did all those things while she was in school. So she didn't have time downtime like she's used to. And I uh-huh. and time to read her books. Even though she read for school, she took them and read them for school. That was one of the things she complained. She was very, very upset with spelling. It's one of mm-hmm. the things that that she really started, and, and my husband said she'd been complaining to him because it was too easy. They're mm-hmm. giving us too easy. The spelling is way too easy. And, mm-hmm. and she had, they had to read books that she wasn't interested in. And she had to partner with a kid that couldn't read well. So she wanted more, but at the same time, I said, you know, when you go to middle school, you could do, uh, they could put you in a more advanced class. She's like, no. She was done. That's, that's, I talked to her after she quit, you know, when she yeah. said she quit. I said, you know, you can do. So funny enough, about a week after she quit, uh, the principal called me. The principal called me to see, uh, to ask, oh, we love having Gigi. Can I ask why? And I said, well, um, she's told me she's really quitting because she doesn't have time to do her things. You know, she shows cows and she likes uh, do her, her things with the cows and work, helps her dad and she doesn't have time and said, well, you know, I'll, what if she comes part time? And if she comes in the morning, because most of the elective was after lunch, uh-huh. I will take her in the morning and she can just do that. But and I did offer her that. And she said no. But we, we really would like to keep her. What can we do to keep her? That's exactly what he said. We really would love <laughs> to keep her. What can we do to keep her? And I'm like, I know maybe she will change her mind and. Maybe she'll decide to go back. But right now, she's happy. He said, well, you know, but it's good socially for the kids to be in school. I said, you know, she has a very 
full social life. She has friends. She does 4 age, does Girl Scout. She's doing basketball. She does piano, horseback riding. So she has a pretty full schedule. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And 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 there's a big group of homeschoolers that do a lot of things. So it's <laughs> like, oh, okay, okay. But if she ever thing, <laughs> if she ever wants to come back, you know, we'll, we'll work with you. We'll do something. Well, that was very nice of him. <laughs> he was a very nice guy. I liked yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So I had a great. I, think... I had a great experience as a school mom. Yeah. With oh, a, with a nice with nice people at school to work with. So mm-hmm. that was good. That was that was really nice to be able to have that kind of team experience that everybody's kind of supporting your daughter, right? Yeah, they were. They were pretty great. Yeah, that's awesome. I think um, there was a couple of really cool points. Um, her noticing that she was missing out on the downtime, like she was keeping up with as many activities as she could along with school. But, you know, conventionally, we don't really value that downtime, but it's so important, isn't it? You know, it's just processing time. It's, I I guess, I mean, relaxing, yes, but it is so important mentally and emotionally. That's how you kind of put it all together, isn't it? I think so. I think so. Because her her downtime is not really a downtime. It's mm-hmm. just time for her to do things that are valuable for her. Mm-hmm. You know, work with her dad, be with her dad, uh, play with her friends. And when they're playing, they're learning so much. They're doing so many interesting things. Read her books, uh, Warriors. That's She loves it and she reads it over again. And she, she, now she's in, on Instagram. She doesn't post, but she likes to read. And it, it's just, there's no time. You know, you're in a hurry. Yeah. I remember the, the, the weeks were like, get up, take Gigi, and then go pick up Gigi, and then take Gigi here. So your life is different. Um, I, I, and I know you're going to ask about how we went with my son being home. He's very easygoing, and he does his mm-hmm. own thing. And so it wasn't too bad. I I wasn't too pulled in different directions by that. He is 14, and he's very independent, very easygoing. Uh-huh. And so it wasn't too bad. If I, I guess if I had younger kids that I had to give more attention and if I wanted to take them to do things during the day, I would, I would be restricted by the school hours. Yeah. But it, it, it wasn't the case with us. So it yeah. worked out well. Oh, that did work out well. Um, before I forget that other thing I was going to mention that was uh, interesting, because I remember um, when Lissy in, in Girl Guides before... It was probably she would have been in maybe grade eight ish because I know they were talking about how fun high school would be, and they would uh, they would always comment to her how she must be so bored because she wasn't going to school, right? Uh-huh. They just could not imagine that there was anything else to do outside of school. It's which funny was that you're mentioning that because. Um... I think right after she she left school, she really needed a downtime. But at the same time, she would did mention for the first time she would say, "I'm bored," mm. and it was because it, she had to kind of diss school for a little bit. I think mm-hmm. from having to do things that she that were not her choice. So there wasn't yeah. a little bit, even though she was only there for six months or less, there, there was a little bit of, of a transition time from being in school to, you know, doing her own things. And so she... Yeah, be, she, you kind of get used to have people telling you, you know, having, since you've got those hours and things you have to do in those hours, yeah, I guess you can get used to it pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, 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 it wasn't long, but it, I, I noticed that she wasn't as motivated to do her, her the things she loved. And I think she did, didn't just, she just needed to do nothing mm-hmm. just to not go anywhere. And if she didn't want to, just to kind of. Yeah chill and and decompress from all that yeah oh, decompress brief, is a great word as brief as you know as her mm-hmm. experience was it was a semester yeah oh that's really interesting yeah that's great um looking back 
Uh, how do you see your unschooling principles were continuing to support Gigi while she was in school? I think it helped a lot. It helped yeah. keep it peaceful and it helped me from becoming the nagging school mom that are always on top and of the kid. Do this, do that, you know, with homework or or with getting up in the morning. You know, there were times that she did get up. She's like, oh, I don't want to go. Are you sure? I know I would really make sure that, that as if you're going to miss. And most of the time she went, but there were times that she did not want to go to school that day. And, and there were a few, but, you know, I was able to like, okay, well, we don't want to go, but I made sure she was not going to feel like she's missing something. You know, you can always go later if something happens, you know, mm -hmm. if you decide to change your mind. So I think it helped me be a calmer school mom. M more. Yeah. Your focus was more supporting her in her not getting to go. Yeah, yeah. And not being school being the end all of the relationship or the life, you know, for many school kids. Yeah. School is everything. It's their life. That's yeah. their job. Their everything. School was a choice here. So we made an important choice. I honored her, her wish. And I, I, I didn't take it as, a, as light, like, oh, she's just going, but she can quit. I made it serious because she wanted it to be a serious thing. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. make light of it, which I, I'm afraid maybe some parents would like, oh, she's going, but I don't care. No, I said I, I was as serious as she was, but I was as serious as just supporting her. I volunteered. I went and I did face painting for the class. I went to the book fair. So I did all the school things with her. Very happy to do it with her without complaining. I tried as very hard not to do the oh, see, oh, you know, when she complained about something, to listen to her, but not to respond going, see, that's if you were home, you wouldn't have that. That is such, such a great point. It is Alex, very hard, because, but you yeah, can do it. It's, it's so important because you don't, if you aren't supportive of them in that choice, you're even just by no reaction or not helping or, you know, making little comments here and there, you're belittling their choice to go. Absolutely. Right? It would be the same. You know, I, th I, I, um, I hope any unschooling parent that sends their, that the kids decide to go to school, that they support their kids school choice as much as they would support their kids choice for gaming or magic uh, uh, or, or any other interest. any activity yeah, any other yeah. interest and so a school uh, her school choice even though we're not in schooling she was a school kid i didn't call mm -hmm. it unschooling she wasn't in schooling anymore but by using the unschooling principles it was her choice so i supported that passion as i did the same way i supported her passion of showing cows or that i support her brother's passion of japanese and gaming you know it so i didn't make light of it i didn't say oh it's just you know she's just going there uh, you know she can she can quit whenever she wants i didn't keep saying things like that she was going to school and that was it mm hmm yeah, well, because, I mean, she knew she could quit. And, you know, as long as you keep the communication, you know, free and open, you'll uh, you'll hear clues from her and help help her. It's the same way, you know, as like you were saying, as we support, um, say, their interests, like when Lissy went to Girl Guides, when they asked for parent volunteers for this activity or that, I would ask her, you know, would you like me to help out with this? Or is this something you'd like to do on your own? Right. Sometimes yes. she it was something that she really wanted to be totally independent and go do that camping weekend all by herself with, you know, with other parent volunteers without me there. Same with my Kinkrati, you know, and, and the same as you talked about with Gigi in school. Yeah, I think that's such a great point. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid some people would keep saying, you know, you don't when she when you complain about something, it's like if you if you keep putting fuel in the fire like the kid is complaining oh you know today at lunchtime was boring or something and you mm -hmm. say see but if you if you were home you didn't have to that's just belittling what they want and it's just not supportive so i hope nobody no. does that you know i would just say oh you know Gigi, but maybe you can do this you know i so i tried to help her do what she wanted without making it like a, a choice out that i despised that she knew i didn't like 
you know. Yeah, no, exactly. Because you're helping them brainstorm and process with the goals that, that they're trying to uh, get at, you know, with with their choice. Absolutely. And such, yeah, yeah. And I, I have to say, I, I did love school when I was in school. I mm-hmm. loved it. So I don't come from that experience of not liking school. Her dad d- did not like school, but I loved school. I think schooling is better, and that's why we unschool our kids. But I don't hate school. I, for some kids, school is much better than any other choice. Mm-hmm. So well, sometimes I, it's a good fit. It, it, it is. Well, sometimes it's better than being at home, even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know, but even for some kids, if that's they, what they want to do, I'm I'm completely fine with supporting them. So you know, it, at the same time that it was hard, am I failing? Am I not? I'm, am I not fulfilling her needs? Which I did. Um, when she had mentioned the year before that she wanted to yeah. try, I said I, I did make an effort to find more social uh, social interactions for her, more more for her. I wanted to make sure, is she thinking about going to school because I'm not fulfilling a need that she has? So that's very mm-hmm. important, too, is to find out why they wanted to go to school. But the conclusion, you know, I, you know, and I did, I found more things for her to do. And, but in the end, she really wanted to try. She really wanted to see if it was all she thought it was. Mm -hmm. The idea she had that it's sold to the kids and TV shows and friends talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great point. When they, you know, first mention it in conversation, it's it's a great time to dig into it and to try and, you know, you're you're trying to find that motivation or what what they um, think or hope to get out of the experience. And like you said, you may find that um, it was just a wish for more activities or a wish for more social connections. But, you know, as you thought about that, dug into it, you came up with it was really the school experience that she was looking for, right? Yeah, she was looking for what she her friends talked to about. Um, she mm-hmm. was thinking, you know, you're going to go to school and you're going to learn all those things, and and it was fine. And I'm glad she tried, and I'm glad I was able to support her and mm-hmm. be there for her and not be the parent that was dismissive. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a super point. Now, when we were chatting in preparation for uh, our talk today, you mentioned that Daniel is applying to go to A-level high school in Japan. So I was hoping you could talk a bit about how that came about and what he's doing to prepare. Yes, yes, uh, I know. I'm. Uh, he. It's funny, all this time I've always asked, you know, if you wanted to go to school and Gigi went to school, I said, you, do you want to try? Because I yeah. want them to know that they have a choice. And he's like, no, no, no. So he's always liked things Japan, mm-hmm. but somewhere in the last two, three years, maybe, it's gotten his interest has grown, and I think that um, him falling in love with physics has some something to do with it. Mm-hmm. And we were talking, we were chatting, and and then he came to me and he said, I. He wanted to learn Japanese, and I gave him some some online free classes that through our library. They're really good. I'm doing Korean too on that, and he was trying to do that. And I got I went to the library and got 500 Japanese language books and and physics and math, and and that's he wants to do physics. That's he wants to be a scientist. I think he dresses up as a scientist most of the time. <laughs> And we, I actually found out for him that Tokyo is the fifth best university for physics, and yeah. and it's something that. Well, anyway, he, I don't know how we were just talking about Japanese and learning, and he said that he wanted to go and do study in Japan as a high school student and to be live like a Japanese and do everything like a Japanese. I said, well, like an exchange student and you can go for six months a year. And he said, yeah, yeah, I want to go. I want to go really bad. So he, he was 13 when we had this conversation, you got to be 15. He's going, he just turned 14. And so he would be 15 for next fall. So we're Uh applying, we're already in contact with the rotary and checking other, um, other programs. And he is, 
all, it's all he thinks about is going to Japan and he wants the whole experience. It might be because, you know, he has watched a bit. I wouldn't say he a lot, but a bit of um, anime. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of high school things. You know, they're all oh, in yeah. high school. They're all in uniforms, which he likes. And, and he has this idea that's how it's going to be. Uh, we did have a Japanese trainee that lived with us when he was a baby. So maybe there's a little influence there. And when he was five years old, he went by Naruto. Mm-hmm. We, everybody knew him as Naruto. Ah. So uh, that was, I used to introduce him as Naruto because that was his name. So mm-hmm. there's, it's been a, a passion about Japan since he was little, but it, it ended up that he wants to be Japanese. Well, not be Japanese, <laughs> but have all the experience. About Immerse Japan. himself. Immerse yeah. himself in the culture. And he yeah. likes traditional things. He likes the Middle Ages. He likes swords. He likes, you know, all that honor mm-hmm. thing. He's a very black and white kid. He will not lie. He likes, um, he's very quiet. And he's very Japanese in a lot of ways. <laughs> you, know, you're a little, you know, more introspect. So I've uh, so he's studying all this language, and but it's hard because it's a very different language and and two different writing systems. So uh, talking uh, three months ago, I said, well, I could tr- see if I can find uh, a school that has Japanese. That would be the cheapest, you know. I, I luckily in Minnesota, I can enroll part time. Uh huh. So he could could go to school and do like one class and come back home. Yeah. So I've looked up none of our schools. None of our schools here have the Japanese classes. I look at the community college doesn't have Japanese classes. So there's no nothing. So I've looked for tutors. Mm-hmm. And I found the tutor, an older gentleman. And I said, well, we can try a class. Mm-hmm. So he tried and he loved it. And he is loving every minute of it if he could he would go every day but unfortunately wow. he's very expensive you know tutoring <laughs> private tutoring so he goes twice a week oh wow and he has picked up so much they have conversations in japanese in front of me simple conversations but that's it's very impressive i i know a few languages and i know how hard it is to it, it's in, especially such a different language as Japanese yeah. is the the construct of the phrases are very different. They're somewhat similar to Korean, and I've studied a little bit of Korean to know um, that the structure of uh, how you speak is very different, and you add things. It, 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 he's loving it. it, so that's what he's doing to prepare for his Japanese. If you know, and he has to pass and get in the program. I've had difficulty, unfortunately, with. Uh, a few programs have said that absolutely Japan will not take homeschoolers. Mm-hmm. The Rotary said no problem. If you have a, a school a, a transcript, if you make a mm-hmm. transcript for him, it's not a problem at all. And but so we'll see. I guess they're yeah. still afraid in Japan of the school refusal, which is uh-huh. something that they consider like a mental, yep. illness there. Um, mm-hmm. I think because the Brody program is a different program, you don't get high school credits and you spend mm-hmm. like three months with, and so you go to like three different families. It's a more of a culture immersion program, even though you go to high school. So oh. you don't really need to, 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 you know what I mean? That it, it, yeah, it's a yeah. different program and, and it sounds really good. And I think that's, he will love because of it. Yeah, because it's more of cultural immersion. But you know, it, it it goes in his plan that he he learns enough Japanese that he can master. He really needs to master Japanese. Then he can apply because he wants to go to an Ivy League school for physics. Those are his mm-hmm. plans, and those they can change. He's fourteen, but his plan yeah. is to go to an Ivy League, and you know how expensive they are here. So I to, I I doing some research. I told him, you know, it's the fifth best. Physics university yeah. course is Tokyo University, and it's under six thousand dollars a year. Oh, but wow. you need to pass this really, really hard Japanese test, Japanese mm-hmm. language test. So that's one of his other. So it, it is a goal that you know it's 
getting bigger you know now he wants to he, he already wanted to speak japanese but now there's even another reason why he reason. should yeah should because then he can go study in japan so we'll see wow. how we'll go i'm excited for him i've i've came to america when i was 16 to work as a trainee to learn to show dogs and um i know how fun it is to go at that age he will be 15 when he goes so just a year younger than me Mm-hmm. But it's it's exciting, and I was excited, and I loved it. It was the best experience. I'm so happy my parents let me go. And I when I came, I didn't even go to school. I spent a year without. They let me quit school for a year to come learn what I wanted, what was my passion back then. You know, and I went back to Brazil yeah. and graduated from high school and went and graduated from law school. So I know it's, you know, it's something that you do when you have passion. It doesn't. It's it's great. So I I'm lucky that my parents were not in schoolers or that those kind of people that you know supported me and my passion. And I I'm I'm very happy for for my son to have a passion and go for it. Wow. Yeah. That all sounds super interesting. I mean that your your parents too allow uh, you know being open to you taking time to, I mean, go to another country and pursue your passion at 16. That's, yeah, live, that's live really with awesome. People, and, and, and live with people they did not know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I know. You know, I was like referred to people by people that my parents really didn't know, but I knew. But, you know, yeah. it's and the dog show people that I've met back then, they're still friends and in touch. You know, this is how many, 30 some years later. <laughs> And they're still my friends and they've been a big part of my life. And I've learned so much and I've spent a year traveling the, the, the United States and showing dogs and met people from all over the world doing that. So I hope my son's experience is as wonderful as mine is. Mm-hmm. And I also feel safe that I we have our trainee that's, that lived with us with us when he was a baby that lives in Japan. So there, and I have high school friends that graduated from me. they also live in Japan. They're Japanese. And so I have friends that I can trust. If something happens, yeah. I have somebody there. The somebody, same way, you yeah. know, my parents said, you know what, you know, your cousin, your aunt, you know, they live, they lived here. If yeah. something happens, you go to their house. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's, that's great to know. I, I mean, when Lissy moved to New York city, that was, part of my comfort too I knew some people you know that were absolutely a couple hours away that I knew that she could get to or they would go in and get her if 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 ever needed be but yeah that is so great to hear about uh, Daniel's story too that's really interesting and you know what I, I must say all that support that you're giving both of them all that research that you're doing and trying to help them um, find information uh, to to follow their aspirations. That's, that's really cool. I loved hearing uh, some more about that. Yeah. I do a lot of research. Um, yeah. and, and it, it, I know, even though, you know, my son is very mature, it is over their head to do all those Lego and, and, you know, researches and all the little details that goes into somebody going on, on a program like that. You know, a lot of parents will say, well, yeah, go look for it and I'll give it to you. But it, it just, it's too much for them to do it. But all my re- being this person that loves to research, I've always been somebody that I hear about something and we Google it and we research and it rubs off. My kids do that all the time. They do that <laughs> yeah. all the time. Since they're little, you know, sometimes my son will know things and I'm like, how do you know? Oh, I, I, I read about it, but he read about it because he's Googling, researching, researching. Yeah. <laughs> So I know, oh, I know because he's seen me doing it, you know, not yeah. because I told him, go research yourself, go look it up. Sometimes he asks me something and he's just like, Google it, Google it for me. But he's doing like 10,000, oh, not 10,000, I'm exaggerating, 10 times more on his own. Yeah. He's just sometimes asking me to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, exactly. I mean, we'll be in the car, Mike and I, and, <laughs> and having a conversation, some question will come up and he'll like, pull out his phone and he'll be Googling it because that's what he's seen. Exactly. You know, that's just, we, we look for information when we have a question. We just don't go, Oh, well, don't know that. And don't know that. You know, yeah. But, but yeah, no, that point about, um, 
you know, when they're considering something, we have experience to share, like all those legal implications you were mentioning and all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, we have more experience to know that there will be information that they'll need in those areas, you know, that they might not have even known to to search out. Right. Yeah. So, of course, we can add all that to the pot so that they've got even more information for them. So, yeah, no, that that's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I, um, I think that support, you know, it's, you know, if I was going to wait for him to be able to do all that, he'd yeah. be missing out and other things that he'll be learning because that will come. Mm-hmm. You know, even he's already coming. He's already doing the research, but more will come, more knowledge. You know, it adds up. It just builds on itself. Well, yeah, there are. Uh, when we bring that information to them and say, oh, there's this consideration, this consideration, and this is what I found out, you're you're still expanding their world and Absolutely. their understanding of what's involved, right? So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so, so much for taking the time to speak with me, Alex. It was no tons of problem. Fun. <laughs> it's always fun. We it miss is, you. You is. should come visit again. Oh, I know. Bring, that was so fun. The, bring Lizzie to take some great pictures. Pictures. Picture. Maybe she'll yeah, have yeah. cows in her pictures or things like that. I gotta say, she would love the animals. <laughs> uh, before we say goodbye, uh, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Probably Facebook. I do have a blog, but I rarely go, if ever. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be Poly Cows, Poly Cow Blog, uh, p- Poly Cow Blogspot.com. But I'm on Facebook, Alex Polikowski. And I'm in some of the unschooling groups, like always learning Yahoo and radical unschooling info, info on Facebook. Okay, so those great. are I- the places I go the most. All right. I'll share links to those uh, in the show notes so people can connect with you if they like. And thank you again very much. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. And if you'd like to immerse yourself in unschooling ideas and inspiration with a group of like-minded parents, check out childhoodredefined.com for information about the Childhood Redefined Unschooling Summit. It's being held in Bethany Beach, Delaware, October 19th to the 21st, hosted by me and Ann Oman. Registration is now open until September 16th. Have a great day.